So, um, so now, any liability issues in here? There's a couple that, that he talks about. <coughs> Potential liability issues. Um, can you like, ask the guy if he was hurt? Yeah, absolutely. Are you hurt? He's moaning back there. Are you injured? If he's injured, what does Jim have to do? Right. And so if after the fact the guy says, listen, they almost broke my wrist handcuffing me, and I complained they didn't do anything. Well, yeah, okay, you can still have that point of contention. You can still have that argument. But at least Jim said, I heard these things, and I asked him, are you injured? You know, you could ask the additional question. Do you need medical attention? And it's like, you know, it's, it's amazing how many people are going to say yes just because they think they want to force off, especially DWIs. They want to put off the test. Who pays for it could be your department. It could be if it's the taxpayers. That you're, you're responsible for it, but yeah. if, the, if he cut his hand breaking you know, the glass to get into the door, he's responsible for it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly, yeah, correct. And, and it can be the department, and that's a really sticky issue. If he's in your prison and something happens and you end up calling the paramedics, you could very well end up having to foot that bill. But you can't not act simply because you think your department's going to have to pay for it. And that's where following proper department procedure is really, really important. And if that means you've got to call your sergeant and say, listen, I've got this person who's complaining of these things and wants medical attention. I'm going to call the paramedics. Is that cool? And they say, no, don't do it. What are you going to put in your report? <laughs> you hate to burn your sergeant like that. But you know, at this point, you know, I called my sergeant. I explained what the situation was and you know he directed me not to notify medical personnel whatever you know what I mean you can do it in a diplomatic way but you have to put that in there it's important because you know that's part of being a sergeant or a lieutenant you have to take that responsibility then you better document why you did what you did because did you want to document that he disagreed? Oh, that, like wait, no, say, say the whole thing again. Ask the whole question again. Like, if you call medical or whatever, or... You mean on your own? Right, like you didn't call him to begin with, or you didn't, you know, you did something and you didn't, but you documented it, and then when he read it, he didn't agree with what you did. That's going to happen often. So, yeah, okay. you're going to have to deal with the fact that Sergeant maybe doesn't like you, <laughs> you know? And those are real issues, and those, boy, those are things that I can't even begin to address in the court writing. But documenting things are, is really important. Why did you do what you do? That way you can always go back and you can say, you know, according to, you know, departmental procedure, this is why I did this. And Would you want to document then that, like, you had a conversation with your sergeant? And you mean after the fact? Yeah. No, I don't think I would do that. You might document and put it in your own file, your own personal yeah. file. Yeah, uh, but that's not out. something I was, I'm going to put into the case file. No, I'm just saying. So. Yeah, you talk about, yeah, now that's a, that's a really tricky one because now you're, you know, um, boy, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, yeah, that's a tough one. Now you're talking about departmental relations and... You guys all know my, you, my feelings about administration that I, A, don't trust administration. And so my advice to you is anytime you have a conversation with a sergeant, good or bad... What's the so very first thing you do? It, you, go, you go somewhere and you write down yeah. the details of that conversation. Yeah. If at all possible, have that conversation with a second person there. The, the, um, the thing that we did in our department is the very first thing you asked was, can I be disciplined for this when I want to talk to you? And if the answer is yes, then you say, I would like, you know. Union um, rep. Right. Um, union rep or wh whatever the rep is, that, that can be there for you. That's just what you did. So, and any so good administrator now? won't hold that against you because that's just how you do it. Pardon? The other report? Um, there's actually a couple more things in here that I really want to that I want to point out, and this is one of my biggest. The last one. My personal no, my personal biggest pet peeve, and I'll leave with this. Um, passive voice. Who knows what that is? This officer. If you know he's referring to himself, not necessarily. So. Um, Which page on? Let's go with page one. So, also observed, that's not, is that page one? No, that's page two. Yeah, go back up. 
There you go. Whoop, right here. So, a um, couple misspellings, but that's those are more funny than anything else. Um, you know, also observed was a radio device. Observed that the front door. Um, let's see. Those are a couple. Here's a good one. He was then observed and heard removing coins from the till located behind the bar. So who is the he in this? The suspect, right? So who did the observing in the hearing? You're pointing to Jim. Was, were there other officers present? So who did it? How, how long between when this thing was written and when he's sitting in the witness stand, uh, in the witness chair. What's the time? Typical time that's going to elapse between these two things. Absolutely not. Four months? Four. Five months? I mean, it's going to be a long time. We're going to how backlog the courts are. So, initial appearance too. So who did this? This is this is what's called passive voice. Passive voice. I know it's an English grammar thing, so don't worry about that. But worry about this. Who did it? You want to know, when you read this thing six months later, who did it? Who did the hearing? Who did the seeing? It's important. What, do you, what can you refer to? Maybe field notes, if, if there are any. So passive voice is tricky, because then you end up with a situation where you're not quite sure who did it. And, and if you're thinking back, well, shit, it, I'm pretty sure that was me. Does that count on the stand? No. It does not. Could you say, like, all officers present observe? Or I wouldn't, because now you're saying, you're, you're claiming that these other officers saw the same thing you did. You can't do that. Okay. This is your report. If they want to say that they saw that, they better write a supplement report saying they saw it. And you're going to ask them to do that, because you want that additional information. But this was, he was then observed and heard removing. Well, just say, I saw him and heard him removing coins from the till. Just say that. Does that make sense? Do you understand what passive voice is? Mm -hmm. That's when you actually take the person who actually did the thing. So, so this. I threw a piece of chalk at him. Okay? As opposed to he was hit by a piece of chalk. You know, who I'm sorry. <laughs> who, who did that? You know, he was hit by a piece of chalk. Who hit him? I should throw it something smaller than me. Um, you know, who hit him if, if I wrote he was hit by a piece of chalk? Well, you might write that simply because you don't have any idea who did it. But if you know who did it, then say who did it. You know what I mean? The person was handcuffed and read his Miranda warnings. Well, who did that? Who handcuffed him and who read Miranda? That's really, really important. I handcuffed him. I read him Miranda. Does that make sense? Do you understand the difference between those two things? Passive voice is a huge thing because it, 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 it doesn't identify who the actor is, who did the hearing, who did the the observing, who did the handcuffing, who did the Miranda. So and that's there, and that's so, so common, especially in police writing, but in general, it's really common. So like if another officer says that he saw this and he whatever, can you put in your report that officer so and so Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Officer Parlow officer told you yeah. that he saw. Yeah. Yeah. Officer Parlow said he saw and then parentheses reference supplemental, you know, Parlow supplemental report included in this case file. Organization of information. So I know there's a lot we didn't talk about. Um, if you guys ever want to talk report writing, if you have any interest in it, I know most of you don't, that's fine. If you want to talk more about it, if you want practice at it, if you want me to read things, I'm happy to do that. I'm almost at least three quarters of the time over at the Mugby on Huff Street. So it's Anybody right there. bring those uh, reports on that pizza that I requested? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like him to get feedback on them? I'm not paying him, people. So I think okay. I just did. Okay. So no, but really, I'm I'm happy to be, you know, because I think it's um.